Welcome, we will be covering one of the very important topics in research methodology that is variables. In this class, we will be discussing the 28 different types of variables and it would be the most comprehensive collection on the various types of variables. Now starting with what is variable? Variable as the name suggests means that it varies. Now in what respect does it vary? It can differ in magnitude. So it's a basically it's basically an attribute or a quality that could differ in magnitude and we call it as a variable. Now what are the various controls of variable? Let's say my salary in an organization could be based on the following different four factors that's my competence, my age, my gender or my education. So all these factors affect my salary. So salary becomes the dependent variable here and all these factors which are affecting or manipulating my salary would become the independent variables. Similarly, I can say these independent variables act as a cause which leads to an effect which effect is finally measured and that is measured as a kind of uh, predictor uh, variable or we also call it as a dependent variable. Now if we go forward we can say that independent variable influences the change in the dependent variable. Now in the class on hypothesis we will be focusing on a single example where we will be talking about a student, uh, a child who eats ice creams and runs a temperature. So that is our basic example and we will be working around the same example throughout all the research methodology classes in the uh, upcoming sessions. So let's say eating ice cream leads to fever is my statement. Now in this statement what is the dependent variable and what is the independent variable. So fever here is dependent on eating the ice creams. So ice creams becomes the independent variable and fever becomes the dependent variable. However, this whole event is controlled under a certain set and that is what we call as controls. And within these controls, let's say the susceptibility to infection could be one of the uh, intermediating or mediating variables we also call those as intervening variables. So you have mediating or intervening variable and that could be susceptibility to infection. Now <coughs> another important variable here is the confounding variable. Confounding variable is anything extra besides the given situation. So I say eating ice cream leads to fever. So these are something which are known. But this fever could be caused due to some other reasons. So let's say it could be due to a mosquito bite. It could be due to another infection or so on and so forth. So this mosquito bite or infection becomes my confounding variable. So confounding variable in simple terms is an extra variable that interferes the existing activity. So let's take another example where I say activity level leads to weight gain or activity level determines the weight gain or the obesity in the children. So this obesity is dependent on my activity level. So my activity level is the independent variable, obesity is the dependent variable and if I include an extra parameter let's say age this age would become the confounding variable. So this confounding variable is the extra variable that we talk about here. Now another example to understand dependent and independent variables could be uh, let's say you have here IQ varies with age. So what I am doing is the IQ is varying and that variation is dependent on age. So here age becomes my independent variable and IQ becomes my dependent variable because this IQ is dependent on the age. Again next example is effect of noise on test score. So the, the final test score results are based on or dependent on the level of noise. 
So level of noise becomes the independent variable and test scores becomes the dependent variable. Now it's very important to understand the formulation of the dependent variables and the independent variables and what would be the dependent variable or the independent variable in a given question. So most of the questions <coughs> sorry nowadays try to ask about how, uh, how can you judge what is a dependent variable or an independent variable. So as we talked about these variables we have already discussed these variables in detail. Now mediating an intervening variable, there is one interesting example. So it's a kind of hypothetical concept that you try to introduce. So let's say parents status uh, ultimately reveals a child's status and that is underlaid by the level of education. So the level of education becomes the intermediate variable or the mediating variable. Similarly, let's say hunger is a hypothetical concept okay a hypothetical construct that shows a relationship between the amount of the food consumed and the length of the time i can remain without the food so the amount of the food that i consume would become my dependent variable and the duration for which i can remain without food would become my independent variable and hunger would become here a kind of uh, mediating variable. Now coming on to the next kind of variables you have the quantitative and the qualitative variables. The quantitative variables are those which could be measured in numeric terms. So you have interval and ratio scales. So the next topic that we would be discussing is variables based on scaling. So you have four variables interval, ratio, nominal and ordinal and all these four variables we will be discussing in detail in the next slide. Again, qualitative talks about attribute, good or bad, pass or fail. So all these are kind of attributes, employed or unemployed, skilled, unskilled. So these can be compared but cannot be measured in absolute numbers. So those we call as quantitative, qualitative uh, variables and under qualitative we understand nominal variables and ordinal variables. Now moving on to the four variables based on the scaling. So as we said, you have nominal variables. Nominal variables are categorized into various categories but there is no ordering or no direction. So let's say you have blood group A, B, AB and O. So I have four categories of the blood group that is given here and that is a kind of nominal data or a nominal category. Again you have marital status, so married, unmarried or you have gender. So all those are kind of nominal data that you try to understand. Under ordinal data, we understand the ranking. So let's say uh, the same example, eating ice cream leads to fever. Now this fever could be classified as low fever, medium fever or high fever. So high grade fever or low grade fever or medium grade fever. So that will be the three categories within the fever. And therefore we call these categories as ordinal data. So let's say under economic status, I can say low economic strata, medium economic strata and high economic strata. So any kind of service quality that I am providing would also be a part of the ordinal data. The next, so these two becomes the qualitative variables. The next two are the quantitative variables that's the interval data and the ratio data. Now to understand the interval data, the simplest example is I have set of two pens here. And the gap between the two pens is say two thumbs that I am taking here. Now if I place a third pen here, the gap between these two pens would remain the same that would be of two thumbs. That means I have let's say block A, I leave two spaces and then I have block B, I leave two spaces and then I have block C. So this would be a kind of interval scale where I have fixed interval that I am plotting in between. So a common example would be the case of uh, uh, temperature scale, so degree Fahrenheit, degree Celsius, I move with a constant interval. So you have 100 degree Celsius, 90 degree Celsius, 80, 70 and so on and I mark those on the scale. Again, under interval data, I cannot say that I have a quality or I have a zero as an absolute value. So let's say if I say zero degree Celsius, it would be the freezing temperature. By zero degree, by stating zero, I cannot say there is absence of heat or the 
there is no uh, there is no presence of heat in the region so that is what we try to understand under interval data however if this zero is there in the ratio scale and i am trying to measure measure the weight i can say zero means absence of quantity there is no quantity that is present but that won't be the case in the interval data so that's the major difference so under ratio scale if i try to explain 40 kgs and 20 kgs i can say 40 kg person is twice that of the 20 kg person so their weights are in the ratio of 2 is to 1 that is one thing I can say or if I say 40 kg divided by 20 kg so sometimes it could happen the value might end up into 0 and you can say a 0, 0.0 on a ratio scale that means there is absence of the weight that is present in the uh, data so you have the ratio scale and the interval scale which are quantitatively measured so good examples of ratio scale would be height weight age weekly food under interval data you usually take the standardized exam scores or the temperatures now the next is the data classification as continuous discrete and categorical so categorical that we have already talked about is divided under nominal and ordinal data so under ordinal as we said it is arranged in order so high medium low and under nominal you just have the categories which are not arranged into order then you have the numeric data which could be either continuous or discrete when i say <coughs> continuous it is a kind of continuous variation let's say the weight of the children varies from 30 to 35 so it can be 30.5 it can be 32.8 and so on so that is a kind of continuous variable under discrete variable i have the absolute values so let's say i have uh, 10 cars 20 cars or 30 cars i cannot have 10.2 cars so these are kind of discrete values that you provide so number of children number of cars or number of vehicles number of dresses so all those could be a kind of discrete variables under continuous you have a series that goes on so it's a kind of continuous uh, variation so age temperature time height would all be con considered under the continuous variables the next is absolute versus relative variables so when i say relative variable i am trying to explain relationship between <coughs> one or more object however when i say absolute the meaning implies that there is single object that is present in the universe and I am not comparing it with any other thing and I am what I am trying to explain about that variable is in absolute terms this variable acts in certain fashion. It is not that uh, the variable is twice the variable b as in the case of ratio scale which would be an example of relative variable. The next are global, relational and contextual. So when I say global I try to explain only at the level uh, of defining the relationship. So you have a kind of global picture that comes into play. So if I want to explain about a school, I can say the, the pass percentage in the school, the level of education in the school, so all the criteria that explain the school at a holistic level would be part of the global variables. However, if we take an example of say student, I can say intelligence, his academic performance, his co-curricular performance, all those would be part of the global, uh, global variable again because I am talking about that individual student as a whole. <coughs> the next is relational. Under relational, we try to explain a relationship between the unit. So it's a kind of sociometric index where you try to explain the relationship between the variables. Contextual means a superset leads or provides the same value to its subset. So I have a kind of superset which shows all the students in this school are intelligent. So ultimately or the mean of this school intelligence is say 100, the IQ coefficient is 100. That means all the students who are enrolled in this school would have an IQ on an average of 100. So this technique is known as disaggregation. Opposite or reverse to contextual is the analytical or the structural variable where you have the different variables and what you try to do is you try to bring them under a common head. So what you are trying to do is let's say 
the mean of all the students who are performing here is 50 so let's say this student performs at 55 this performs at 45 and so on so based on the values of the individual units i can give the value of the superset or the super unit and this method is known as aggregation so contextual we call it as disaggregation because we are moving from super unit to sub units under analytical and structural we are moving from sub units to super units and we call this as aggregation the next is active active variable is one which can be manipulated by the experimenter so it's usually used in the experimental studies and finally you have the attribute variable attribute variable is one which shows the quality so it could be good or bad or any pre-existing quality that explains the variable now here are some other important variables that you must be aware of the first is the binary or the dichotomous variable we call it as a pass fail or 0 1 variable so <coughs> anything in absolute terms as 0 or 1 would be a binary <coughs> so it can be yes or no pass or fail and so on then you have endogenous variables and exogenous variables endogenous variables are those which lie within the system and exogenous are those which are affected from outside so let's say eating ice cream leads to fever so all the parameters that are leading to fever from inside like cold cough would be kind of endogenous variables however the those parameters which are affecting from outside the weather conditions or so would be a kind of exogenous variable then you have the dummy variable now this dummy variable is very very important to understand so it's a kind of categorical variable which you try to bring down and into a binary variable so let's say i have a dummy variable where I talk about is, uh, uh, students who are single, married or divorced. So these are the three categories that I use here. Now based on the categorical variables I have three categories. Now I would divide these three categories into binary values. So I can say single yes or no. So all those who fall under no would be either married or divorced. So if these are the three categories. So you have married yes or no so all those who are falling under yes would be married and all those who are falling under no would be either single or divorced and similarly you have the divorced yes or no so with each category you have a kind of yes no or binary value that is attached to the categorical var uh, variable the next important variable is latent variable latent as the name suggests is a hidden variable so that variable is something that is not obviously seen so let's say if we talk about person's intelligence let's say person a is more intelligent than b so this is a, a quality that is hidden that is not obvious or that cannot be actually measured so we call this quality as a latent quality which cannot be observed obviously however if the same latent variable I want to reveal into reality what I can do is I can use that latent variable as a manifest variable and this manifest variable is an indicative of the latent variable that you are taking so let's say I talk about IQ or the intelligence score now I can say person A has an IQ of say 120 and person B has an IQ of 100 so I can say person A is more intelligent than B what I am doing is I am manifesting the latent variable which was intelligence into a manifest variable that is the IQ score here and finally you have the polychotomous data where you have two or more possible values so any data where you have more than two values like under dichotomous we say just pass or fail yes or no however under polychotomous we can say uh, students if we are talking about students let's say graduates postgraduates and phd scholars so those would be a kind of polychotomous data where you are using two or more possible values to explain the variable so with this we cover the 28 types of variables we will be doing more classes on research methodology with the same example and that would help you understand the concept in more detail in the coming lectures. Have a good day ahead.